Jnatimarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namaha Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvasesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So we're going through the pastimes of Lord Krishna, as they are told to us in the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, and which Srila Prabhupada has presented in the form of the Krishna book. <laughs> So today we are on chapter number 23, which is called Blessing the Brahmana's Wives. These Brahmana's wives are very famous. They are called the Yagna Patnis. Yeah, if you sing the song, if you sing the song, Jai Radhe, Jai Krishna, Jai Vrindavan, Sri Govinda Gopinath Madana Mohan, it mentions in there about Yagna Patni. So, yeah, Patni means the wife and the Yagna, the Brahmins, they do the Yagya. So they're the wives of the men who do the Yagya. Okay, so uh, they're very great devotees and in this chapter you hear why they're such great devotees. But their husbands are not very good devotees. They're brahmanas, but they're not very good devotees. So, the, the, Early morning, one day in, in, in Vrindavan, the cowherd boys were very hungry. It, somehow they'd come out in the forest and they didn't take any breakfast. So the cowherd boys came to Krishna and Balaram and they said to Krishna and Balaram that we know you are very powerful. You have killed many demons, and today we are very hungry. So, can you please arrange something to satisfy our hunger? So Lord Krishna knew that uh, he, he said just nearby 
there's a home of these brahmanas. So you, if you go to these brahmanas, they are going to do a Vedic, a Vedic yagya, and they prepared a lot of food for the yagya. So you can go and ask them. These brahmanas, they want to get, they want to go to the heavenly planets. They want, they have a, the desire to go to heavenly planets. So they're doing this yagya that they can go to heavenly planets. So they're, they're not devotees, they're not Vaishnavas. They're, they're Brahmanas, but they're not devotees. And they cannot even say the name Krishna and Balaram. They, chant, they will chant many Vedic mantras, but they won't chant Krishna and Balaram. So you should all go. Krishna told all the cowherd boys, you all go and ask them. And, he, and Krishna told them, better you don't mention my name because I'm, I'm, I'm just a Vaishya. And they're Brahmins. They won't like to give charity to me. But you can use the name Balaram. Balaram, he's a Kshatriya. So he's a higher class than me. So all the cowherd boys went to see the brahmanas and they, they came before the brahmanas and they folded their hands very humbly and then they offered their obeisances to them, bowed down to them and they said, oh, Earthly gods, you sh please hear us. So they said, we want to tell you that Krishna and Balarama are nearby with all their cows and we have come to ask you for some food for them. So you are all brahmanas, you should know that it's good to give charity and so you should give us some food that we can give to Krishna and Balaram. So the coward boys are just from the village. They're not very well educated, but they know about religious principles and they knew that, the, that the, these brahmanas are supposed to give charity. Especially when the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna and Balaram comes and he asks for food, the Brahmana should give it. So 
And whatever we have is meant to be offered in sacrifice. So if you give for Krishna and Balaram, that is the, that is the best yagya. So the coward boy said, we can take your food, we can take your food uh, and it, there's no harm, there's no problem with your ritual, you can still do your yagya. If you give us food, it will be good for you and it will help you to get a good result in the yagya. So although these cow these coward boys, they were just simple boys, but they were telling these brahmanas what to do. So they they were they were telling them you should do this, you should give us the food, you should you know they were giving instructions to the brahmanas. So the brahmanas were not very happy. They were thinking if this Krishna and Balaram, if they're really God, why do they have to come and beg food from us? They should have their own food. Why do they have to come to... They didn't say anything. The brahmanas didn't say like that, but they were thinking like that in their mind. So these brahmanas were a little proud. They were thinking, you know, we're brahmanas, we're, we're high class. These people are just cowherd boys, they're not, they're not important, we're brahmanas, we're the head of the society. The Brahmana, they, they were Brahmanas, but they didn't know the purpose of the Vedas is to understand Krishna. And if they don't understand Krishna, then whatever they do is useless. So it doesn't matter to just if you're a Brahmana, just because you're born in a Brahmana family, if he doesn't know Krishna, if he doesn't understand Krishna's position, then he cannot be a guru, cannot be a spiritual teacher. <laughs> So the brahmanas were, they were only interested in the material body and they only, they want, their purpose in doing the yagya was to go to heaven, to go to the higher planets for sense gratification. So they could not understand the position of Lord Krishna. So they didn't reply to the cowherd boys. They didn't say yes, they didn't say no. They just stayed quiet. They ignored the cowherd boys. 
พราะพวกเขาเนี่ยไม่รู้ถึงตําแหน่งของกฤษณาที่แท้จริงนะคะว่าพระองค์เนี่ยสมเป็นใครเพราะฉะนั้นพวกเขาก็เลยไม่ได้ตอบอะไรนะคะไม่ได้บอกว่าให้ด้วยไม่ได้บอกว่าไม่ให้ด้วยก็เฉยเมยไป So the coward boys were very disappointed. So they went back to Krishna and Balaram and told them what happened. But Krishna told them. Krishna just smiled. He said, "This is the way of begging. When you go for begging, it's like that. Some people will give." Not everybody is going to give. Don't be surprised when people don't give you. But then Krishna ก็สอนนะคะบอกว่าเวลาเธอออกไปเหมือนกับขอบาทเนี่ยเธอจะต้องดูด้วยว่าบางคนเนี่ยเธอจะต้องเตรียมใจไว้เลยว่าไม่ใช่ทุกคนจะให้เธอบางคนอาจจะให้บางคนอาจจะไม่ให้ So somebody doesn't give you, don't get disappointed. You just have to go on, go to somebody else. So Krishna told them. He said, "This time I want you to go back, but go to the wives of the brahmanas. Go and see the wives of the brahmanas. And these wives, these ladies, they are all." My very good devotees, they're always thinking of me. So go and ask them to give some food in my name. So ทีนี้เนี่ยกฤษณาก็จะบอกว่าไม่เป็นไรงานเอาใหม่ให้เธอเนี่ยครั้งนี้ให้พวกเธอไปแต่ว่าไปเนี่ยไม่ต้องไปหาพระมาแล้วให้ไปภรรยาของให้ไปหาภรรยาของพวกพระเพราะว่าพวกนางเนี่ยเป็นสาวของฉันแต่ฉันมั่นใจว่าพวกเขาเนี่ยจะให้ So the wives of the brahmanas they were in their houses. And they were all inside their homes, you know. And the cowherd boys went there and offered their obeisances. And they said, "My dear mothers, please accept our humble obeisances. And we want to tell you, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram are nearby, and they've come with the cows, and they're hungry. They want to have some food. Can you arrange some food for them?" <laughs> เพื่อนเพื่อนของกฤษณาเนี่ยก็ไปกันเหมือนเดิมนะคะไปหาภรรยาของพรามนะคะแล้วก็ถวายความเคารพแล้วก็บอกว่าท่านแม่แม่ทั้งหลายฟังค่าเถิดตอนนี้เนี่ยมีกฤษณากับบาราเนี่ยแล้วก็ฟูงวัวเนี่ยอยู่กันที่ใกล้ๆที่นี้แต่ว่าพวกเขาทั้งหมดเนี่ยยังไม่ได้กินอาหารเช้าเลยทุกคนก็หิวมากเราก็เลยอยากจะเหมือนกับมามาขอท่านว่าท่านจะให้อะไรเรากินได้ไหมก็ไปขอ So when they heard the names of Krishna and Balaram, then they jumped up and they said, "Oh, oh, we want to see Krishna and Balaram!" And they got pots and they filled the pots with all the best food because they prepared all beautiful, nice, tasty food, and they put many food preparations in pots, and they took their pots on their head and they went running to go and see Krishna and Balaram. แต่สถานีนะคะพอพวกนางได้ยินว่ากฤษณะกับบารามเนี่ยอยู่ใกล้ๆพอพวกนางได้ยินปุ๊บใช่ไหมคะก็ตื่นตัวขึ้นมาแล้วก็บอกว่าเอ้ยกฤษณะบารามอยู่แล้วรีบเอาหม้อมาเลยนะคะแล้วก็หลังจากนั้นก็ตักใส่อาหารแบบดีๆชั้นหนึ่งเนี่ยขนมอร่อยๆก็ตักใส่หมดแล้วหลังจากนั้นก็รีบวิ่งไปหากฤษณะบารามด้วยความตื่นเต้นตื่นตัวมาก They were very eager to see Krishna They were and they they didn't care to leave their homes They didn't care about their husbands or their children or their fathers. They just went and said, "No, we have to go and see Krishna." Some of their family tried to stop them, but they wouldn't. Go, they they couldn't stop them. They said, "No, no, we're going to see Krishna. We want to see Lord Krishna." Then they went running into the forest to find Krishna. Some of the family tried to stop them, but they wouldn't. They couldn't stop them. They said, "No, no, we're going to see Krishna. We want to see Lord Krishna." Then they went running into the forest to find Krishna. 
แล้วก็ต้องจะไปไหนอย่าไปอะไรเงี้ยเสร็จนี้พวกนางก็ตอบว่าอย่าอย่าห้ามฉันเลยอย่าหยุดฉันเลยฉันจะไปหาคริชนาเนี่ยคริชนาวาลารามาอยู่ใกล้ๆ And they saw, they saw how beautiful Krishna was, with blackish complexion, and wearing cloth that was like gold, and he wore forest flowers as a garland round his neck and a peacock feather on his head. <laughs> And he had one hand on the shoulder of his friend, and on the other hand, he's holding a lotus flower, and he's waving the lotus flower around. So when they saw Krishna, Krishna, they saw him eye to eye, and then Krishna entered their heart through their eyes. So Lord Krishna could understand the minds of these ladies because Lord Krishna is a super soul. So he knew that these ladies had come to see him, although their family didn't like them to come. So Krishna knew they were following his instructions. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, "Just surrender unto me, and I will protect you." So they surrendered to Krishna. <laughs> So Krishna welcomed them. He says, "Oh, my dear wives of the Brahmanas, you are very fortunate. You are welcome here. What can I do for you? How can I? What can I do to help you?" It's very good that you came here. I know your family didn't like you to come, but I'm happy with you that you came here. So he said, "It's it's good for you, and it's good for the whole world that you have come here." So Krishna said to the the wives of the brahmanas, he said, he said, now we've met and you brought food for me, very good. He said, now you can go back to your home. Your husbands will need you because they have to do the the ritual. The the husband the brahmana has to have his wife with them when they do the ritual. The husband and wife go do it together, so they need you. They can't do the yagya without you. So you should go back to them, be with your husbands, and do the yagya. <laughs> ในพิธีบูชาเนี่ย
ขาจะต้องทําคู่กันเป็นสามีภรรยาเพราะฉะนั้นภรรยาสามีคนเดียวก็ว่าก็จะไม่ได้เขาก็ต้องรอให้ภรรยาอยู่คู่ด้วยเพราะฉะนั้นกฤษณาก็เลยบอกให้So the 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 Brahmana ladies, the wives, they said, no, this is not right. They said you you promised that if anybody surrenders to you, you will protect them. You know, we have surrendered to you. Now we don't want to go home. We're just going to stay here in the forest. <laughs> อย่างนั้นได้ยังไงคะข้าพ่อข้าพเจ้าเนี่ยรู้มาว่าใครก็แล้วแต่ที่ซีเลล่าตอบพระองค์เนี่ยพระองค์จะทรงรับเขาไว้เพราะฉะนั้นพวกเราเนี่ยมาที่นี่แล้วมาหาพระองค์แล้วเราไม่อยากกลับบ้านแล้วเราอยากจะอยู่กับพระองค์ที่นี่เนี่ย he said what what are we going to do if we go go home our husbands our brothers and people they don't they won't accept us anymore we've already left them they they will not let us back แต่เราบอกว่าจะให้พวกเราเนี่ยกลับไปได้ยังไงพวกเราเนี่ยทิ้งพวกเขามาแล้วทั้งหมดความจริงพวกเขาพยายามจะห้ามเราด้วยซ้ำแต่เราก็ปฏิเสธโดยการไม่ฟังไม่รับฟังเขาแล้วก็มาทิ้งทุกคนมาที่นี่ We said we will just stay in the forest. You maybe you can help us. You can arrange to protect us. Arrange for us that we can stay here in the forest because we have no home anymore to go to. พระเจ้าค่ะพวกเราทุกคนเนี่ยก็อยากจะอ้อนวอนพระองค์ให้พระองค์เนี่ยช่วยสร้างอะไรก็ได้ในป่าแห่งนี้เพื่อให้พวกเราอยู่พวกเราจะไม่กลับไปนะ But Krishna told the ladies, he said, no, he said it's okay, you can go back, your husbands will accept you. แต่ในแต่กิชาก็จะบอกว่ายังไม่เป็นไรพวกเธอเนี่ยในกรณีของพวกเธอเนี่ยพวกเธอสามารถกลับไปได้สามีของเธอเนี่ยจะยังต้อนรับพวกเธออยู่ You are all my pure devotees, and so not only you, everybody, all the demigods, they'll be satisfied with you because you're my pure devotees. You've surrendered to me. When somebody becomes a pure devotee, then it pleases everyone. The pure devotee is a friend of everyone. Anybody, Krishna said, anybody who thinks of me will very soon come to me. For my eternal, they'll get eternal association. So you see, you see the, it's, it's something like the gopis. The gopis they also came to Krishna when Krishna was in the forest. Krishna called the gopis, and when they all came, then Krishna told them to go home. And and they said, "What you called us to come here? Now you're telling us to go home." So the gopis, they never went home. They stayed there in the forest the whole night, and they danced Rasa Lila with Krishna. But here, the wives of the brahmanas, Krishna is telling them, "You should go home, go back to your husbands." He said. You don't have to be with me. You don't have to be close to me to be with me. You can all, I will always be with you spiritually in your heart. So when the wives went back, their husbands were very happy to see their wives back, 
And then they sat down together and they did the yagya. But there was one there was one wife, one of the Brahmana's wives. She was not able to go. They they forced her. They wouldn't let her go to see Krishna. They forced her to stay. So when when she heard about Krishna and Krishna and how the other go other wives had met Krishna and she heard descriptions of Krishna, then she became absorbed in Krishna and she gave up her body. She left her body. <laughs> So Krishna and the cowherd boys, they were able to enjoy the nice food which the Brahmana's wives had brought. They had they ate to their full satisfaction. And these brahmanas who tried to, who had stopped their wives from going to take part, from going to Krishna, who tried to stop their wives from going to be with Krishna, and who didn't give Krishna any food, they began to regret their behavior, that they never gave Krishna any food. Although the coward boys had come and asked for charity, they hadn't given anything. Krishna had appeared just like an ordinary cowherd boy. And they thought he's just an ordinary person. And when they came and asked for food, they didn't pay any attention. They just ignored them. But, but then they saw the faith and the devotion which their wives had. And then they understood their wives were much greater than they were. Their wives were pure devotees. They had, they had spontaneous love for Krishna. They'd achieved the highest level of love of Krishna. But these Brahmanas, they couldn't understand how they couldn't understand how to love Krishna or how to serve Krishna. And they talked, they were talking to each other, the Brahmanas were talking to each other, said, what is the good of us being Brahmanas? It just doesn't mean anything. We don't, we have, we, what was the good of us learning all the Vedas? And we we performed so many sacrifices and we followed so many rules and regulations, it hasn't done us any good. And our family hasn't helped us either. Uh, 
and we've been doing so many rituals, we've done so many yagyas, everything according to the scripture, it hasn't, it hasn't given us any benefit. We don't have any love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Our mind and body and senses are not able to understand that Supreme Lord. So these brahmanas understood that if you don't develop Krishna consciousness, everything else is useless. Just a waste of time and energy, everything else, to do everything else. If there's no Krishna consciousness, then it's just a waste of time and energy. Krishna's, Krishna's material energy is so powerful, it covers up the mind even of a great yogi. And just look at us, we are supposed to be expert brahmanas, we are supposed to be teachers of everybody else, but we could not understand the Lord, the Supreme Lord when He came. But look at our wives, these women, they are so fortunate, they, they gave their, they've given, they were willing to give their life for the Supreme Lord Krishna. They were living at home, but they get they gave they went out of their home to go there to give service to Krishna. So although these women are, they're simple ladies, not so well educated, but they, they're so good devotees and they have so much love for Krishna. They're much better than we men. We're supposed to be intelligent and educated, but we have no love for Krishna. So women, they, women, you know, they don't get the sacred thread when they get initiated. They, they don't get the Brahmana thread, that's only for the men. And the women are not supposed to live in the ashram as brahmacharis. Uh, 
But these women are so wonderful, they have developed so much love for Krishna. They said, we, we're the brahmanas, we're too much attached to the materialistic way of life. Although we're the brahmanas, we're attached to materialistic life. So we think Krishna was just was merciful to us when he sent the cowherd boys to beg food from us. Krishna, we know Krishna doesn't need our food, but it was his he was giving us mercy by sending them to beg from us. So we should know Krishna always has many thousands of goddesses of fortune who are all serving him. So he doesn't need our food, but he was giving us a chance to do some service. So Krishna was just giving us a chance to do some service. That it was all his mercy. He was just a, it was a trick just to give us a, a chance to do service. So Krishna is the Lord Krishna is not different from Lord Vishnu and Lord Vishnu is the enjoyer of all sacrifices. Our yagya was meant for his pleasure, for his satisfaction. So we were so stupid, we could not understand the identity of Krishna, we couldn't understand he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But our wives, they're they were very they were very good they could understand so we're very glad we have such wonderful wives who are very advanced in krishna consciousness by Krishna's Maya, we're just doing karmakandi activities, just trying to do some material rituals for material benefit. So we we are, we pray to Krishna to be to forgive us for our offenses. We're so we're so attracted by the material energy. So the brahmanas were very sorry for their behavior and they prayed to Krishna forgive, to forgive them. But they didn't go to see Krishna personally. They, they wanted to go to offer obeisances to him, but they were afraid 
they were afraid of Kamsa. They thought if they go to offer obeisance to Krishna, Kamsa will hear about it and Kamsa will punish them. So we should understand that it's not easy to surrender to Krishna. We have to purify ourselves. Before we can really fully surrender to Krishna, we have to purify ourselves by doing devotional service. So this example about the brahmanas and their wives is very important. The wives, because they were devotees, they were inspired by devotional service. They didn't care about Kamsa. They'd heard about Krishna because people often used to come from Vrindavan, different people would come from Vrindavan selling milk or selling flowers or fruit. They would bring things from Vrindavan and they would talk about Krishna and Balaram and they would hear about Krishna and Balaram killing the demons. So the wives of the Brahmanas had heard about Krishna and Balaram and when they heard that Krishna and Balaram had come there, they were so eager to go and meet them. <laughs> เอ่อลีลาของคริชนากับบาลารามอยู่เรื่อยเพราะตอนที่มีคนจากเอ่อวินดาวันมาเนี่ยก็เค้าก็จะเล่าให้ฟังว่าเกิดอะไรขึ้
Hare Krishna. Gurudeva, I'm just a little confused when uh, Krishna said to a Brahmana wife that you came here and you bring the food for me. This is very good. It's good for good for you and good for the others, good for the whole world. So I, I'm just wondering how is it good for others? I know it's good for a Brahmana wife because they came there. They see the Krishna, they give the food. But what, what to do with the others? How is, how is the connection there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the, the point is Krishna is in everybody's heart. And you satisfy Lord Krishna, then everybody becomes satisfied. Lord Krishna uh, is the root of the whole material creation. So everybody is sad. When Krishna is happy, then everybody is happy. Everyone benefits. Okay, thank you. Yes, Krishna is everyone happiest. If Krishna please, everyone please, yes. That's correct. Thank you. Krishna is, everybody is a part and parcel of Krishna. So when we satisfy Lord Krishna, just like when you water the root of the tree, all the leaves and branches, they are nourished. เอ่อเพื่อนๆเด็กเลี้ยงวัวเนี่ยได้กินซึ่งมันจะเป็นประโยชน์กับพวกเขาแล้วก็จะเป็นประโยชน์กับคนทั้งโลกอันนั้นเ
ทุกอย่างเนี่ยมันเป็นแฟนของคริสนาอยู่แล้วถ้าไม่งั้นก็ไม่มีอะไรคริสนาวันท์ให้เราเห็นความเพียรที่ผู้หญิงได้รับจากพระเจ้าคริสนาเนี่ยอยากจะให้เราเห็นเกี่ยวกับความรักแบบสุดๆนะคะความรักแบบที่ลูกปีเนี่ยรักคริสนาแบบที่พวกนางเนี่ยรักคริสนาว่าเป็น That she has so much love for Krishna that she s give she can give up her body in separation from Krishna. So she's, you know, this they're in they're in Vrindavan, they're in the Holy Land. And they're there in Krishna's pastimes, so they're very, very special devotees. And so the, they're serving Krishna there in Vrindavan on this earth, and she left the body. She'll go back to serve Krishna in the spiritual world. Yes. What's your other question, Vaishnavi? Uh, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, the, according to Vedic injunction, the women are not allowed uh, for the purification process of initiation by sacred thread, thread like that. So, so I had a doubt uh, whether the women are not given initiation previously. And many people ask me how in uh, other sampradaya people ask me how Brahmana initiation is given to women in i s k o n like that. Uh-huh. Well, initiation. Initiation is given. We know, even in Lord Chaitanya's time, there were women, and there, even there were women gurus, like Lord Nityananda's wife, Janava Devi. She became the guru, and she had disciples. And the sect, the Brahman initiation. How is it given in Iskon? Well, they give, we give the mantra. We give the mantra. We don't give the sacred thread. The ladies get the mantra to chant, and they're given the mantra to chant because they're the ladies. They're also worshiping the deity. You see, in Iskon, we also allow women to worship the deity. In in India, it's customary only the men are there on the altar, but at least outside of India. Often outside of India, we allow the women to also worship the deity. Sometimes in India, in Iskon, some tem- most temples they prefer to just have men worship the deities. But uh, outside of India, we're not so conservative, and we allow the women also to worship the deities. So to worship the deities, they should also chant the Gayatri mantra. But they don't wear the sacred thread. Is it clear, v a i s h n a v i Yes, Guru Maharaj. Now it's clear for me. Yeah. Do you have another question? Yes, uh, Guru Maharaj. Uh, uh, it's so very interesting that this Brahmanas. They are not able to go to Krishna, uh, even though they had a desire to surrender to Krishna because of the fear of Kamsa. If Krishna is the God, then Kamsa cannot do anything to the Brahmanas. But still, they cannot. They are not able to surrender to Krishna. I was thinking, even uh, my question is also like that. I wanted to surrender to Krishna, but not able to surrender to Krishna. So, <laughs> is it like we have to get purified more by devotional service, like that, Guru Maharaj? Oh, definitely. It's only by devotional service that we can get purified. D- d- taking up more hearing and chanting, then we, as we do more devotional service through hearing and chanting and serving, of course, serving also, 
serving the devotees and, and doing to, taking part in different activities of Krishna consciousness, it purifies us and it qualifies us to surrender more to Krishna. So surrendering is an ongoing process. We have to surrender more and more. You know, doing devotional service itself requires surrender. But we, we, as we go on and we do more devotional service, we have surrender more and more. And so it's, it's a continuous process. We, we have to surrender more and more. And we can never fully surrender. You know, sur fully surrender means 24 hours a day, every moment, every action, every breath, it's for Krishna. So it's an, a continuous, it's an ongoing process that we want to surrender more and more. And as we surrender more and more, we get more purification. And that purification allows us to experience more love for Krishna. Archana? Yes, Guru Dev. Kachana Mataji na ha, po tham wa, mwen ka, thi lao fang li la ni pai na bang khang a, mwen na, bang kon na, a yu na sada na kang, thi bap wa, yai ka silola to Krishna, ta ka silola mai da, lua yang silola mai po, lua yang mai bori sut po, na ka ni ka silola, mwen ka tuwa Mataji yang na, ko lu sut chen na mwen ka, na, tha mai thun pen chen ni, pen pa wa tu yang na, yang mai da, yang mai bori sut khun lu pa, yang mai da bori sut lu pa, ala ni, sa deng Guru Mara ka tuwa wa, sa hai pa wa, lao cha to, การสิโลลาบเนี่ยมันไม่มีวันจบสิ้นเพราะฉะนั้นเพื่อให้ตัวเองบริสุทธิ์ขึ้นเนี่ยก็โดยการที่เราเนี่ยจะต้องฟังแล้วก็ทําปฏิบัติการวิจารณ์เสียสละรับใช้กับคริสต์เนี่ยไปเรื่อยๆจนเราเนี่ยบริสุทธิ์ขึ้นแล้วก็จนเราเนี่ยสิโลลาบให้กับคริสต์เนี่ยร้อยเปอร์เซ็นต์สิโลลาบให้กับคริสต์เนี่ยร้อยเปอร์เซ็นต์เนี่ยหมายความว่าอะไรหมายความว่าเราเนี่ยคิดถึงคริสต์เนี่ยตลอด24ชั่วโมงไม่ว่าจะเป็นการนอนนั่งเดินหายใจก็จะมีแต่คริสต์เนี่ยอย่างเดียวอันนั้นเนี่ยแล้วเมื่อเราเอ่อมีกิจการที่สำเร็จในระดับนั้นเนี่ยเราก็จะเอ่อมีเพิ่มขึ้นไปเราก็จะมีความสุขจากการที่เราเนี่ยเอ่อมีกิจการที่สำเร็จไปเรื่อย So surrendering you know we think when I join Krishna consciousness we think I've surrendered but that's just the beginning of our surrender and we go have to go on and on บางครั้งเนี่ยเวลาเราเข้ามาในกิจการที่สำเร็จไม่มาเนี่ยเราก็คิดว่าโอ้เราสิโลลาให้กับกิจการแล้วแต่ว่านั้นเนี่ยมันเป็นการเริ่มต้นเฉยๆซึ่งเราจะต้องเอ่อดำเนินต่อไปเรื่อยๆ So, Krishna said, as you surrender, I reward you accordingly. So we... Right, you, think, you think of Krishna one hour a day, then Krishna may think of you one, hour, one and a half hours a day. And you think of Krishna three hours a day, Krishna may think of you four hours a day. And if you think of Krishna 24 hours a day, Krishna will think of you 26 hours a day. So, Chaya has a question. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranam. Hare Krishna. Achana Sutla, Anaha. Or Nunja, Plasma One, Ti Fang, Susharu, Mataji, Anaha. คือวันนี้พี่เจอกับตัวมีเหตุการณ์เหตุการณ์หนึ่งคือมีสาวกคนหนึ่งเป็นสายเราเนี่ยแหละพี่เป็นคนที่ซื้อโทรศัพท์บ่อยมากซื้อปีหนึ่งหลายหลายเครื่องนะคะซึ่งพี่คิดมีความส่วนตัวคิดว่าเขาว่าเหมือนกับว่าใช้เงินในการตอบสนองประสาทสัมผัสมากเกินไปพี่ก็เลยใช้ความรักบอกเขาไปอย่างที่ฟังมัตจิมเมื่อวานแต่เขาก็ยังเถียงพี่ว่าเขาเนี่ยเอาเงินเนี่ยไปโดเนตในในปริกรรมาแล้วเขาก็ไม่เคยผิดสินสี่ข้อเลยเขาบอกพี่แบบนี้แต่พี่ก็บอกว่าการตอบสนองประสาทสัมผัสเนี่ย
มันเป็นสิ่งที่ไม่ดีกับสาวกนะอะไรเงี้ยพี่ก็เลยอยากจะถามความเห็นของมาลาดว่าสาวกที่พัฒนาไปเรื่อยแต่ว่าหลงไปในมายาแบบเนี้ยค่ะได้แต่ว่าเขาก็ยังถือสินสี่ข้ออยู่พี่จะถามว่าเขาจะมีบาปหรือมีกรรมมีอะไรเกิดขึ้นกับเขาไหมแล้วเราควรจะแนะนําเขายังไงบ้างอะไรเงี้ยค่ะขอบคุณค่ะอ um, Her question is actually from uh, yesterday class. Yesterday we have class with Suchara Madhuri, and she was uh, she was telling us how we should deal with devotee. So she, the topic was we should not find fault, but we should uh, like warn that devotee with love. So she said. So she uh, yesterday what happened? Like she met one devotee, and then. She saw that devotee uh, buying a lot of mobile phone in a year. So she feel like that is not really necessary and unnecessary that devotee is uh, enjoying material, something like that. So when she go and warn him uh, with love, she said that oh you should not spend so much money on this material thing, something like that. And that devotee reply her, actually it's not. I'm. I'm not breaking any regulatory principle, and I'm uh, don't. I give a lot of donation, something like uh, I I give donation to the parikrama, something like that. They say. So in this case, uh, what should we tell them? How should we warn them that they are going on a wrong path, that they are going for a certain enjoyment, but well, they don't realize it. Well, before you try to instruct someone. You have to be in the position of their senior or their teacher. If you are not their teacher, if they don't respect you, then they won't like to hear you give them advice like this. แต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยไม่ใช่เป็นครูครูด้วยเราไม่ได้เป็นไม่ได้เป็นไม่ได้อยู่ในตำแหน่งผู้สอนเนี่ยเวลาเราให้ให้คําให้คําแนะนําแบบนี้เนี่ยเขาจะไม่ชอบ So Prabhupada taught us that you have to be that you have to before you try to teach people they have to accept you as their teacher as their authority Otherwise, they won't like you. They will. They will not like it that you're telling them what to do. So when you when you try to talk to people like that, somehow you have to be able to speak the the, the truth to them, but in such a way to make it nice, to make it sound pleasing to them. You could say, "Oh, do you buy so many phones too? I I also buy so many phones. You know, I I think it's a waste of money. You know, I I've wasted so much money buying phones." <laughs> No, try to try to speak to try to explain to them in a manner that you're not criticizing them. Try to make it more, you know, that you're talking about yourself. That oh yeah, I, I you know I hate these handphones myself. I have a real hard time with them. แต่เราไม่ได้บอกเขาตรงๆแต่ว่าเหมือนกับพูดใส่ตัวเองแทนว่าดูสิฉันเนี่ยนะเป็นคนชอบซื้อโทรศัพท์หลายเครื่องมาก
I would be rich now if I had not spent so much money on, man, on handphones. <laughs> so this is some ways you can try. <laughs> okay, there's some more hands up. You can choose. <laughs> can, can you see? Yeah, Kanupriya. Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, uh, my question is regarding uh, practicing devotional. Like you say that if we do more devotional service, we get purified. But sometimes the situation uh, that we have, like for example, I want to do my sadhana, I want to do like bhakti, but with my two kids, sometimes I feel like it's so difficult and I feel like to share is, you know, I just have to finish chanting. It's become tension for me, you know, like, oh, I, oh my God, today I can't finish. Oh my God, I cannot do nicely puja, you know, they come and disturb me sometimes. So for this, what should I, what should I do, and what should I think about this, Guru Maharaj? Well, you should think this. Krishna's given me these two children. I have to make them devotees. I have to engage them in Krishna consciousness, and you should try to get the children to do puja. You have a nice son, get your son to chant, get your son to do the puja. He's quite grown up now, he can offer the RT. Yes, he's doing, he's doing his chant also. Okay. But sometimes I'm so busy with them, even cannot chant nicely, you know. They come and ask me, can you give me this? Because sometimes in the morning I can't finish, I have to cook and I have to wake up early. Sometime, you know, it's happened. So. I don't know how to manage. Sometimes I feel like, oh my God, it's so tension for me, you know, I have well, to finish you know, right now. When you have children, you have to learn to find time when they're not there or when they're sleeping to chant. You know, you have to take the opportunity that when, when the boy goes to school, when mother goes to school or when your youngest is sleeping, that time then you can chant. You have to, you have to, you know, have to understand children, definitely they will need your attention. So you have to get some time, you have to find time when they're, they're sleeping, or when, you know, when they're out playing or something, at that time then you have to chant. You have to... Yes, Guru Maharaj, I understand this point, but I mean, when that time I chant, I feel like I just have to finish, you know, they're going to wake up soon and I have to finish. It's not become like I chant for Krishna, you know, I just have to finish this. Well, I have to do it the, children, the children won't be so small all the time. They're growing very fast. So, you know, you don't have to worry that in a little while, you know, they'll be growing up and they won't worry about you. <laughs> You'll be more free to chant. But this is a service, it's a, a very important service to bring up children in Krishna consciousness and to give it, your children a taste for devotional service. It's very, very important to raise your children to be devotees, to give them some nice Krishna conscious atmosphere. So you try to make sure they get a lot of opportunities to go to temple and to be with devotees. Thank you, Uru Maharaj. Thank you. Archana, do you want to translate? What about Mad Madhavi um, what's it, Pavani? Yes. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, Arjuna, I'm going to 
มิเชลกะจะอธิบายให้น้องๆของเล็กได้เข้าใจอะค่ะแต่ว่ามันมันเหมือนแบบเหมือนตัวเองจะยังไม่ค่อยเข้าใจคำว่าอวิชาเท่าไหร่อวิชามันจะอธิบายยังไงจึงจึงจะถูกอะค่ะมันคืออีโก้หรือเปล่าหรือยังไงช่วยถามมหาราชให้ผมค่ะ she would like to ask you the meaning of illusion uh, recently she get to talk with uh, one of uh, her husband brothers And when she h a v e to explain them about Avidya, then she gets stuck, and she was like, uh, "What was it? it? Is that Ahankar or what it is?" What is Avidya? Avidya or yes, illusion. Yeah. Well, Ahankar or Ahankar, or what? Ignorance. 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 Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Avidya, avidya is ignorance. Yes, avidya means avidya means knowledge, material knowledge, knowledge of material world is all avidya. Yeah. Avidya. Vidya is transcendental knowledge, and avidya is the material knowledge. So there's all different kinds of material knowledge. All things in relation to the material world and the material body is all avidya. Avidya, or avidya, means the knowledge that is the knowledge of the world. Because the knowledge that is the world has two parts: the knowledge of the world and the knowledge of the world. So avidya covers the soul. It covers the real knowledge of the soul, and it causes us to think we are the body and to think of everything in relation to the body and the senses. So, uh, it's not. It's not thing to do with ego, right, Maharaj? Avidya. Well, generally, people who are uh, in uh, in avidya who don't have knowledge, then they will have a lot of false ego. They will have strong false ego. They will be more conscious of the body, and they think I am the doer. They think I I did this. I know this. I am. This is mine. This belongs to me. เอ่อความจริงก็ไม่ได้เชิงเลยนะเพราะว่าความจริงน่ะถ้าเกิดว่าคนเอ่อมีความรู้ในส่วนของอวิชชาอย่างเดียวนะคือเขาเนี่ย
Uh, her question is tomorrow is uh, Nityananda Triadasi. So how how can we uh, make Lord Nityananda happy? She said normally she do chanting and normal seva is there, but how how what she should do special to please Lord Nityananda? Well, Lord Nityananda is famous for delivering the fallen souls like Jagai and Madhai. So if you can go del and deliver some fallen souls, give them some Krishna consciousness, then that is the mood of Lord Nityananda. Lord Lord Nityananda went to Jagai and Madai and asked them to chant Hare Krishna and they attacked him and they hit him and he got hit from the head. So, Lord Chaitanya was going to kill them, but Lord Nityananda said, no, you have to be merciful in this age. So Lord Nityananda is very merciful and he's always thinking how to deliver the fallen souls. So you want to please Lord Nityananda, you also go and try and deliver some fallen souls and try ask them to chant Hare Krishna. All right, you understand? Okay, thank you, Hare Krishna. Okay. Yogita has a question. Please accept some humble obeisances, Gurudev. Gurudev, sorry, it's out of context here. It's uh, regarding, you know, my cousin who passed away, Gurudev. I was just, I really have this deep desire that somehow may she be blessed with devotees association in her next life, which will lead to chanting. I mean, I really purely hope so. Is it possible, Gurudev, by any chance that really i'm really begging the lord he had mercy on jaga and mada and tomorrow's nithyananda appearance day i'm really just hoping that she can somehow have devotion a lot of devotee association then certainly it will lead her to chanting because there's no other way one can get out of this world except for chanting okay by your desire it will happen Krishna knows your Krishna knows your sincere desire, so Krishna Krishna can arrange it by your sincere desire. Okay. 
Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you very much. Rajasuya Prabhu, do you still have a question? I think no, Gurudev. No. He just he didn't put the hand down, huh? Okay. Yes, Gurudev. Actually, I got one small question. May yeah? I? Yeah? Yes, Gurudev. Uh, when we read uh, and many stories, we can hear that, uh, we heard that in uh, before, like before Kali Yuka, People can, if they don't, they can like leave their body when they want, when they feel like, then they can leave their body. And uh, very different from the people in Kali Yuga, we don't have that right. And if we also, if some people kill themselves, like committed suicide, that's a big offense. So uh, why is that good? If, and in before when they leave their body, then it's up to them or it's uh, written in that way that they will be uh, dying by leave the body, how, how we should understand it. Who are you talking about? They can leave the body? Like in this story, we can also see that uh, the gopi, you now Brahmana wife, when she feels so much pain that she can't see Krishna, then she leaves her body. They can do that, right? But, but now, but in Kali Yuga, we cannot do. <laughs> Even we feel like to die, but we cannot kill yeah. ourselves. It's not allowed. Well, it's Krishna's arrangement. If Krishna wants someone to live, they'll live. If Krishna wants someone to die, they die. Yeah, it's all up to up to Krishna. It's not that. It's not that the gopi wanted to die. It, it just happened that out of her love for Krishna and her separation from Krishna, that she gave up her body. So it wasn't that she wanted to die, it just happened that she left the body. Krishna arranged. So Krishna arranges these things. It's not that devotee, devotees don't want to die. Sometimes devotees wanted to commit suicide, Lord Chaitanya wouldn't let them. Since you don't get back to Godhead by committing suicide. He said, this body belongs to Krishna, it's meant to be used for his service. So we have to, do, we have to use the body for the service of Lord Krishna. But sometimes Lord Krishna decides that this person's had this body long enough and time to leave the body. We don't know what is Krishna's plan. In Chaitanya Lila, there was a story, the young boy of Srivas Thakur and Lord Chaitanya was in the home doing kirtan in the night and he had kirtan and the young boy died. And and he was the son of one of the sons of Sri Thakur. The young boy died. So Lord Chaitanya, when he heard, he came and he brought the boy back. And he asked him, why are you leaving? And the boy said, well, I took birth here. Now my time here is finished. Now it's time for me to leave and go some other place. According to my karma, I was destined to be here in this home for some time. Now, according to my karma, I have to go some other place. It's not in our hands, B birth and death. It's all arranged by the Supreme Lord according to our past karma. Karmanasa daiva netrena janto deho pap. Karmanasa daiva netrena under the order, under the will of the Supreme Lord and in accordance with our karma. So it's like that. It's not that the gopi wanted to give up her body, but Krishna arranged. Okay, thank you. But Guru Maharaj, Chota Haridas Thakur, he, he committed, he jumped into the river. Is it not an offense, Guru Maharaj? Well, that was a special case because he'd already taken the renounced life, right? He'd taken the renounced life as a sannyasi. He was a 
you know, supposed to be a renounced sannyasi, but he had broken one of the principles of the sannyas. And the atonement for that was that you're supposed to give up your life. Actually, sannyas means, oh, you're already a dead man. Sannyas means you're no longer, you no longer have any material duties, right? But he had made some offence. So when, when he did that, when he gave up his life, Lord Chaitanya said, this is the proper atonement. He said, this is what supposed to do according to the Veda. So it was a very special case and he was a very special person and it was arranged like that. Lord Chaitanya wanted to show everyone the importance, how you have to follow strictly everything and don't be a hypocrite. Yes, Guru Maharaj. That was 500 years ago. It's not quite the same today. I have one question, Guru Maharaj. Yes. Just recently I heard in the news that a, I think a Russian devotee or some foreign devotee in Vrindavan, you know, she, she wanted to be with Krishna so much that she jumped from the balcony. So, what is her, her destination? Is that also Krishna's arrangement? No. You don't go back to Godhead by committing suicide. We don't. I don't know what her destination will be. But this happened in Vrindavan. Yes, it's not good. So people commit suicide like that. Usually, people commit suicide. They may become a ghost in their next life. They may not get a, a gross body again for a long time because they destroyed the body given to them. Krishna gave them the body and they destroyed it. So they may not get the body, they won't get the, the physical, the gross body again for some time and they have to be in the subtle form for, for some time. Okay, thank you Guru Gurudev. ใช่ครับอ่าเราอาจจะเลือกวันตายไม่ได้ถูกมั้ยคะแต่ว่ามีคนที่เค้ารู้ใช่มั้ยคะว่าแบบบางคนอย่างเงี้ยที่เค้า
Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote a poem and he said, the devotee dies to live because the real life is with Krishna. And when he's living, he will try to spread the holy name around. Hmm. Okay, so I think we have to stop here now. Yes, it is late Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank Archana very much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Venus, Baby Nursing, Swami Maharaj. Hare Krishna.